All right. So when I left off the last video, I had just drawn these two eyes with the pen tool, and they were very precise, and I filled them with white. So we have white shapes precisely cut out on top of a black shape that's precisely uh, cut out with the pen tool, but odd. Now, how do I um, cut these out from here? In fact, I'll move I'll move all of them off to the gray so you can see. How do I cut that out so that the background comes through like a mask? So the way I do that is I have to select all the paths that overlap. So that path, that path, and this path, right? And I can do that by selecting them individually and holding down Command. So I have all these overlapping paths selected. Or I can just select that whole layer, which has all of them in it, right? And that automatically selects everything within it. And then I use the Pathfinder, which you can find under Window. Make sure it's checked. And what I want to do is I don't want to add them together because that will just add, it will get rid of my eyes. It will just say, add whatever is overlapping into what it's overlapping with. Instead, I want to exclude. So punch a hole in it. Okay? And then it does it. It's going to make it the fill color of whatever the thing on top is. So it fills it with white, but that's no problem. I just go back and I fill it with black. So what's the difference? Now it's cut out. So using the pen tool and the pencil tool and using Pathfinder, you can get those complex cutout shapes. If you think of it as cut paper, that's the way to do it. You can also use your eraser. That's pressure sensitive. If I inform myself with my sketch there, I can cut out the tongue kind of imprecisely. I can cut out the ribs. And then I'm going to show you one more tool. I'm being really clunky here. But that's because I've already used Live Trace to get closer to the solution I wanted, right? And cut out the beak. And I need, if I need to change my settings, I certainly can. Shrink it down a little bit. Allow for more refined erasing. Like a little dot in the middle there. And these are the methods I would use to actually create something um, from scratch in Illustrator. Which sometimes I do. But when you're trying to match your hand-done sketch, especially if it's an ink sketch like this, it generally makes more sense to live trace and then adapt from there, clean it up. But you use these same tools. All right. So by using the eraser, what do I do now? Well, it gives me a ton of messy anchor points that then I can use the pencil tool or the pen tool to modify and clean up. So around the eye, I can smooth that out. Again, just like magic scissors. But I had to cut out the shape first in order to have that option. And so very often what I'll use the eraser for is to separate two paths so I can draw them separately. So if I do that, it's a little clunky, but then I can use my pencil and go in and vary these outlines. And as long as you can see the anchor points, you can redraw the path with the pencil tool. As long as you start and stop on the path. Like magic scissors. And all of this messiness can be easily cleaned up with the pencil tool or the pen tool. But the eraser left all of these tiny shapes, right, which are pretty messy. So what's an easy way to clean those up? You can use the lasso and then just delete any little stray paths. No matter how small, they matter. 
Okay, so this looks a little strange, right? Let me clean it up just a little bit more. And let's see what we've got. And still got a ways to go. But you can see how I can build it up just right out of Illustrator without having to live trace it. And so that's what I have so far. Right. Now there is an advantage to this. How does this look different than my live traced versions? Let's look at them. Let me just keep this open. So this was my first live trace version. And when you open up an a EPS, a vector file in Photoshop, or not in Photoshop, when you just double click it, it will open in preview, and it will say it's a PDF. It's converting it. And even though it's actually a transparent file, there's nothing behind it. There's just black shapes. It will show it on the paper it would print it on, right? Because a vector will always can fill any space. So the, this isn't the greatest way to look at it, but it's just a quick re reference. So this looks a little less controlled, right? Like the eyes, they're a little loopier. They're not as defined. And just even my uh, eraser strokes that kind of painted this in, these are a little bit crisper than the ones that were live traced. But I can modify the live trace to be whatever I want as well using these same tools. So there's one last tool I want to show you, which is like the eraser, but it's the opposite, where you can paint with with one shape. You can kind of build the paper as you go. And it's called the blob brush tool. So I don't use the paintbrush tool really at all because that, what that does is is paints a stroke that you can vary, right? Um, but I don't like using strokes. I like using filled paths without strokes. So the blob brush tool is right underneath it. And just like the eraser, you can set its size to be pressure sensitive and its variation to be whatever range you want within that. And then when you paint with it, you can go thick to thin and you can add, this is what I like, like about it, and this is different than the brush tool. And as I add to it and do new strokes, all of that is just one path. So whenever you overlap with the blob brush tool, it blobs them together. It makes them one cutout path. So it's like creating paper. And you can see how you can get a pretty nice um, logo that way. So for the rest of this, I could use the blob brush just to draw some nice outlines around these bones. The harder I press, the thicker it will be. And this is how we digitally ink and this is a fairly new tool, but incredibly useful in Illustrator. It's how I, I will digitally ink kind of comic book illustrations. It's just like using a, a loaded ink brush. Now, what are some of the downsides of the blob brush? It kind of smooths things out for you as you go, but you'll notice just like the pencil, you can set it to be more accurate or more smooth. but it can leave you with these slightly unsightly overlaps because it isn't quite as sensitive as Photoshop's brush controls are, which we'll learn more about in digital painting. So you get slightly bumpy things, which then I can simply use the uh, pencil tool or the smooth tool to fix. Maybe the smooth tool first, and then the pencil tool to get rid of those bumps, as long as you can see the anchors. All right. Then, what if I want to fill that in? Well, then I can just use the blob brush. This is kind of what's so nice about it. I can make it a little bit bigger. and just blob it in. Right. 
So you can really uh, do a lot in a short time with this tool. Well, I showed it to you last. <laughs> so you have to play with all of them. But just like hand inking and then scanning, the broad blush is going to look more hand done than the pen tool, which can look a lot more exact. Say it again. Was this the second picture that you brought from us? So we're just looking at different ways to get that black and white logo. Right? So I've shown you a bunch of different ways to use the tools. And of the options I've found, the one I'm liking the most is this one. That approach, that was the sketch. I brought that in from Photoshop, and then we live traced it, and then cleaned it up some more. And we ended up with this EPS file. Just perfectly smooth. And does it have little bumps? Yes. Could it be improved? I'm sure. But we're going to move on. So how do we save this now? How do we import it into Photobucket? How do we make it so it's a file we can print? Well, that's what's so cool about vectors. I'm going to close this, save my progress there. I'm going to open up this EPS file in Illustrator. Right. All this is is black cutout shapes. So because I saved it as an EPS, instead of an AI file, I can move it into other programs. So remember, we save as an EPS once you're finished. You can keep it as an AI file while you're still working on it. So I'm just going to save another copy of it to the desktop. A lot of you are live tracing and you like the result and, and you're wondering, well, how do you deal with it? Well, this is my main approach. I can add to it with the blob brush if I wanted. You know, I can add a little drip. I can make him poop. All right. But if I wanted another shape in here, you can augment your live trace. Right. But the main thing I do is I use the pencil tool with the small selection tool. And I go in and I clean things up, round things out. Like that. Anything that's a little jarring. Because the problem with live trace, it's incredibly convenient but it's not as controllable. So it doesn't always hold up to really close scrutiny. But yeah, I'm liking that. The other problem with live trace is look what it did to this eye. It made it all pretty soft. So how could I fix that? Well, I could try to redraw it, but it's hard to do a sharp angle with the, the pencil tool. You see how it tends towards curves? So I could go to the pen tool, just trying to bring it all around, hold down Option so it converts it to straights here and here. Right. So there's all kinds of ways. Then I can see if I like that better. Yeah, I do kind of like that better. So let's do it to the other side. Just convert that little triangle out of it into straights by holding down Option with the Pen tool. First, you have to select it. Straights there, straight there, straight there. And now I might use the Pencil tool just to round it out a little. And that's why I say it's good to have a deadline when you're doing logos <laughs> and when you're working in Illustrator because so much of it allows you to be a perfectionist that it can get in the way. And then remember, you can also just use the small selection tool and just move anchor points too. You don't always have to redraw. And sometimes you can just play with curves. in a way that you're happier with. All right, so if that's my new improved, just made a few little alterations, 